What's going on YouTube? Super Insane 18 here, and it is a Wednesday, which means that the Power of the Elements is finally legal. The set officially drops on Friday, and OTS stores are allowed to sell it two days early, so it is legal today. So of course I'm going to be bringing you guys some more sprite content. Today we are bringing you a live twin variant, which, if I'm being honest with you guys, might actually be my preferred variant. I know the competitive player in me is saying that the pure variant is probably going to be better, but this deck is just so explosive, and you'll see that at the end because I'm going to give you guys a combo tutorial at the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned for that let's go ahead and jump on in all right so our sprite ratios are going to remain the same with three copies of sprite blue uh, two or three copies of sprite jet two copies of sprite red and one copy of sprite carrot uh, for anybody that didn't see my first deck profile the reason i'm doing two red and one carrot is because i think monster effects are going to be more important to negate uh, with it being a sprite based format more than likely we're going to be seeing a lot of those non-responsive spells like dark ruler no more forbidden droplet ultimate slayer so carrot really isn't going to come up that much you still want to have it for when you need it but you don't need it more than one then we're actually playing three copies of Live Twin Kisa Kill and three copies of Live Twin Leela. These are all that you need for the Live Twin engine. You don't need of the other Leela and Kisa Kill. Uh, just three of these and you're more than okay. Um, and you'll see why in the combo tutorial. Either one of these is pretty much full combo on its own. Either one of these press a, plus a sprite name is absolutely insane. Uh, then, of course, we're still playing our frogs. I don't think that sprites can afford to, uh, that was out of order. I don't think that sprites can afford to not play this. So we have three copies of Swap, our Ronin, and our Dupe. Then we are actually playing some more hand traps. We are playing three copies of DD Crow. I think DD Crow is actually the best hand trap of the format. Not only are you able to hurt Sprite really, really hard by either DD Crowing their Ronin Toten when they use its effect, and then that just locks them out of the Toad to begin with, or if you draw it a little bit later, you can DD Crow whatever they're targeting off of the Elf to resummon. Um, honestly, just a really powerful card, and it still works against other things. It's a really strong card against Despia because you target their Branded and Red target, and then Branded and red can't resolve um, against sword soul you can do it on any of the tenyi monsters like if they put a vashuda engrave and you're worried about the vashuda or if they're doing the boxia play where they boxia target the moe engrave you can hit the moe um, honestly just really strong hand trap i definitely think it's probably the best one in the format right now then we have three copies of ash blossom this like i've been saying is just the generic hand trap so it's always going to be in the deck and then we have the one copy of Evil Twins, Kisa Kill, and Leela. This is the brick of the deck. You need this for the Live Twin engine, and we are also still playing Ultimate Slayer, so you want it for that as well. Um, then onto the spells, we have two one ofs with the Call by the Grave and the Sprite Smashers. Call by the Grave just stops hand traps. Really oppressive card against anything that needs to be in the grave as well. You can just banish things for free. Uh, also, kind of like DD Crow, you can just hit problem cards. Um, and then Smashers is a Mystic Mine Out that is searchable, so you need to have that as well. We are playing two copies of Ultimate Slayer. If I had a third and I had the room for a third, I would definitely play three. Like I said, I think that this format is going to heavily come down to the non-responsive spells, because if you hand trap Sprite, depending on what hand trap it is and at what point in the combo, they're probably just going to set up full board anyway. So you'd rather break the board than prevent it because you're not really going to have much luck preventing it. So cards that break it like the Ultimate Slayer, Dark Ruler No More, or Droplet are going to definitely be more valuable to have. Um, not valuable price-wise, but valuable as in if you want to win, you're, you're going to need these cards. Um, then we are playing three copies of Crossout Designator. Not only is this just really good for the hand traps that we'll inevitably see, but if you are in a sprite mirror match, this card can be killer. Then we have three of our sprite starter. This is the e telly for the deck. There's obviously no reason that we wouldn't play it. And then we end it with three copies of Infinite Impermanence because we want to be able to make sure that if we're going second, we can still attempt to put up a fight. And then if all else fails, we still have that ultimate slayer for the crackback. Moving on to the extra deck, we're going to start things off with some of the Ultimate Slayer targets. We still have the Garua for Fusions and the Cyframe Lord Omega for uh, Synchros. This is going to allow us to draw a card when we use it. This will allow us to re either recycle our own card or get one of our opponent's resources out of the grave, so definitely very good options there. 
Uh, we do have the one copy of Cat Shark, the one copy of Sky Cavalry, and the one copy of Totally Awesome. Now, I'm not actually playing Zeus in this build because we had to make room for the Evil Twin Links, but we are still opting to play the Sky Cavalry because since it is non-target removal, you can still get rid of some pesky cards that you wouldn't be able to get rid of otherwise, so I think it still definitely has its uses. Um, this is kind of a flex spot though, so if you want to play something different, this would probably be the card to remove. Then we have two copies of Gigantic Sprite. This is mandatory, obviously. Um, really, I've been playtesting so much with this deck, and I want to bump both Sprite and Elf up to three. I just can't find the room. I mean, I guess, like I said, the, scout, the Sky Cavalry is kind of a flex spot, so I could bump up maybe the Elf. That feels more important. Um, but I want to put both at three. I'm just not really sure how to do that yet. We have the one copy of Almirage. If you saw my combo tutorial, you know how important this card is. This is a card that lets you play if you open literally nothing but a Swap Frog and you still get to set up your full board. So definitely very important. Uh, then we have our two copies of Sprite Elf. Same as Gigantic. I really kind of want to bump this to three, but don't really have the room. Then we have the two copies of Evil Twin Kisa Kill and our two copies of Leela. These are very integral to the strategy. Again, you'll see during the combo tutorial. Um, but these are the reasons that you are playing the Live Twins. They are linked too, so they fit very well into the gimmick of the deck. And finishing off the extra, we have our Evil Twins Trouble Sunny. Not only can we actually make it off of the two Evil Twins that we play, um, granted we have to do it on a turn that we're not locked uh, into just summoning twos, um, but we also can send it off of our Ultimate Slayer to return a link, and then use its Grave Effect to send the Kisa Kill to get another removal, so still definitely very strong and something that I think we should play. Let's go ahead and show you guys that combo. Alright guys, and now that you have seen the deck profile, let's go ahead and show you that explosive combo I was telling you about. It is a two card combo. You need either the uh, Leela or the Kisa Kill. We're going to use the Kisa Kill here because I like it better than Leela, but it doesn't matter. It can be either or. And the Sprite Blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our turn by normal summoning out whichever live twin we open, so in this case Kisa Kill, and use its effect to summon the other one from our deck. So that's going to be the Leela. Now we can go ahead and special our blue from our hand because we control level two monsters, and this will activate the blue effect, letting us search our jet. Then we can special summon our jet again because we control level twos, and this will activate jet, letting us grab our sprite starter. Now we can activate Sprite Starter, and this is going to be our fifth summon, so we need to make sure that we are able to be Nibiru proof. So we're going to go ahead and summon out our Sprite Red. Now, they have to Nibiru uh, either here or the next summon. It's going to get negated regardless, um, but if they don't do it before this next summon, then uh, they can't do it at all, and they can't waste any of our interruptions. But we're going to take the blue and specifically the Leela, and that's important, and I'll show you why. Uh, and we're going to go into the copy of Gigantic Sprite. Now, that's why it's important they use the Nibiru here, because as soon as we resolve the sprite effect, they can't even attempt it. So if you have the Nibiru at this point, use it. That way you can waste one of my negates, uh, being the sprite red. Um, but we're going to go ahead and use the effect of Gigantic, and we have to detach specifically the Leela, um, which is why it was important that we made it with the Leela, because we need the Leela in the graveyard for later. Uh, and this is going to let us summon out our Swap Frog. On summon, the Swap Frog is going to activate and send our copy of Ronin Toten to the graveyard. Uh, and now what we can do is we can take the Swap Frog and the Gigantic Sprite, and we're going to go ahead and link these into our copy of Sprite Elf. Now, Sprite Elf will activate its effect, summoning back out our Swap Frog, and Swap Frog will activate again, letting us send a second Swap Frog, and here's where we're going to make the totally awesome. We're going to banish the Swap Frog that we have to summon out the Ronin Toten from our graveyard, and then we're going to overlay the Swap and the Ronin into our totally awesome. So that is just another interruption that we have on top of everything else that we already have. Now we're going to take our Jet and our Kisa Kill, and we're going to go ahead and link these into our copy of Evil Twin Kisa Kill. And this is why it was important to put the blue in the graveyard first, because we want to use the Kisa Kill first. And the reason is, is that it'll allow us to get an additional draw during our turn. We'll use the Evil Twin Kisa Kill, and this will summon out the Leela from our graveyard. And then we can take the Leela and the Kisa Kill, and we can link them into a copy of Evil Twin Kisa, or Evil Twin Leela. Now, Leela can go ahead and resummon out the Evil Twin Kisa Kill, 
and since Kisa Kill was summoned while we control a Leela, we can use its effect to draw a card, so we get an additional card, and that's why the sequencing of which ones go to the grave first and which ones we summon back was important, because we want to summon this off of the Leela effect to get that additional draw, and then we can go ahead and pass our turn. Once it goes to our opponent's turn, we'll use the effect of Totally Awesome, and we'll go ahead and summon out our copy of Duke Frog, and this is going to be the end board. So what we have here is we have an Omni Negate with the Toad, so let's just play it out like we're playing through uh, our board. So we're going to use our Toad effect to negate something and then activate its graveyard effect. This will add the Swap Frog back to our hand. Then when our opponent summons a monster, we can use the effect of Elf to bring our Totally Awesome back, which will then act as another negate. We can use the Omni Negate. This time we'll send the Swap Frog we just added back from hand. That way we can keep our Toad established on the field. Then we do have one more Monster Negate in the Sprite Red. And when we use the Sprite Red, we are specifically going to make sure that we tribute off the Evil Twin Leela. And the reason for that is because if we tribute off the Evil Twin Leela, we do get one more Interruption. And that is going to be the effect of Kisa Kill. Kisa Kill is a quick effect to activate, we will go ahead and summon back out our Leela, which if it's summoned while we control the Kisa Kill, will destroy a card our opponent, or on the field, doesn't even have to be our opponent's, but it will destroy a card on our opponent's field, uh, in this case, giving us another interruption, and to top it all off, because we have the Duke Frog, we are not able to be attacked on anything other than the Duke Frog, so that was a two card combo, we ended with four cards in hand because we drew an additional card, so those could be hand traps or any other cards that we might need, and we had, what was that, one, two, three, four interruptions interruptions for our opponent. I think that that's absolutely crazy and hopefully you guys do too. And there you guys have it. That is going to be my build and combo tutorial for the live twin variant of Sprite. I definitely think that this is a variant worth testing. It is very consistent, very strong, very explosive, and honestly, very fun. I think I might actually play this moving forward, even though I still feel like pure might be a little bit better. I definitely see the upsides and the strengths of the live twin variant. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know the deal. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with your friends, and maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. For just a dollar, you can support the channel in a way that I would never be able to tell you how much I fully appreciate. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.